In this video, I'm going to be showing you six top things that you should do to your Arma Vortex before you ever drive it. Hello everyone, my name is Troy. This is Roadside RC. If you're new to the channel, welcome. You'll see us doing the bashing, crawling, drifting, racing, even some FPV drone stuff, and a whole bunch of how-to videos and everything like that. And today we are looking at the Arma Vortex, all right? And there's six things that you're going to want to look at on this truck before you ever drive it. So let's get into it. Item number one that we are going to check is the screw that actually holds this end point of the drive shaft on. So you have the uh, CVD universal drive shaft right here in the middle. It comes out to this metal hex. Sometimes the, from the factor that screw might not be 100% tight. Now to, to check that, we're going to take this small set screw off right here that's on the back side of that control arm. And then I'm going to use a little pick and I'm going to go in right here from the front side. There's a small hole and when you push, out will come this pin. And this whole thing will separate and there you go, enough that you can get in there. So then with your two millimeter wrench, you can actually come in and check the torque, check how tight that screw is. You see, I'm going all the way in there. Now, if you find any of them loose, that is a metal screw going into a metal hex. So I would suggest uh, using Loctite on it. Mine was nice and tight. And so that one was good. I suggest this because if that screw comes loose, what you end up doing is you end up losing this whole piece and your wheel. That's actually happened to me on an Arma 3S before. So man, take the 10 minutes, just check it out. The rear side is actually exactly like the front. You have the one screw here, you push out the pin, you do the whole thing all over again. It's exactly like the front. Now that is item number one for us is the top six things to check before you drive your Arma Vortex. Number two actually comes logically right after it, which is checking your wheel nuts. So when you put these back on, you want to really make sure that you're using a good tool and that you do get these wheels on here nice and tight. That is um, sometimes from the factory, sometimes they will be a little bit loose. So you're gonna check all four of them as you put them back on and make sure they are tight. The third item that we're gonna be checking is the pinion to spur gear mesh. We're gonna see what that looks like. Right out of the box, there's been some, in the recent history, some time in which maybe that comes too tight from the factory. And there's been a lot of folks that have had issues with this uh, Spectrum 3200 motor locking up on them because of that front bearing dying. And so we are gonna check that uh, mesh right now before we ever even drive it to make sure that we're not going to have that issue. With that off, we can now see that gear mesh. I would actually say that what we have right here is looking good. Now there's a little bit of wobble here. So you gotta be careful that you're not pulling or pushing on the spur gear. But in the manual, yes, your vehicle actually comes with a manual. It'll actually give you idea of what a too tight, too loose mesh looks like. And I would say mine, I am very happy with. Um, maybe ever so slightly on the tight side, but very, very, very close. And so if you need to adjust it, you're going to you loosen up those two screws and it's actually all in your manual exactly what it looks like for a good mesh and what you're looking for there. So otherwise, I'm pretty happy with this. OK, so we've checked our drive shaft screws. That was number one. We checked our wheel nuts. That was number two. We confirmed the gear mesh between the pinion and the spur. That was number three. Number four, we're getting into the electronics and we're going to set our ESC endpoints for neutral, full throttle and brake. So first thing we're going to do, obviously batteries are in the controller. We're going to turn the controller on and then we're going to hold this set button while we hold, while we turn the power on until it beeps. All right, we have flashing red fast. 
We're going to hold the throttle completely in the center. Hit the set button once. We get one beep. Full throttle. Two beeps. Full reverse. Three beeps. The ESC goes through the reinitialization and we have now set the ESC endpoints. We're going to go ahead and turn it back off and turn the controller back off. Now with the ESC endpoint set, we are now going to go into the steering endpoints. And so one of the things that people have issues with sometimes is they end up killing their factory servos. And they're doing that because they have, they're overextending the servo further than the geometry of the vehicle will allow it. And so you end up burning up that servo. Setting your steering endpoints is very critical to making sure that this, ser this servo, which is not going to last forever, it is a ready to run servo, it will need upgraded, but it's the key to making sure that this will last as long as possible. <laughs> All right, so the first thing that we are going to do is we're going to go ahead and turn the controller on right now, just to make sure that the vehicle doesn't run away as we power it on. All right, ESC should go into full safe, full safe mode and all that. So we're going to turn this off. Maybe safer to do this upside down. To put the DX3 into calibrate mode, you do full right and full brake before you turn it on. And you should get the flashy blue light. All right, and we are going to then use the steering and you can turn right and then this dual right knob you can actually use it to set the final steering endpoints. You see, I'm not moving the controller, I'm moving this uh, dual rate AVC knob and it will actually set the endpoints. And so I'm gonna come, I'm gonna move it until it just passed where I see the steering stop. So you see here, it's moving, it's moving, it's moving. So I'm gonna keep going, keep going. It stopped there and I'm gonna turn it just a little bit further. A lot of times under suspension load, it'll do something different. I'm gonna go back to the other side and I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm going to back it off a little bit and then I'm going to come into it. I'm going to see where does it stop and that's my steering endpoint. Okay, so just like that, I'm going to then power everything off. All right, and that is now set. You will just want to make sure that when you fire it back up, you have now changed when it comes back up in normal mode. This AVC is going to be wherever you just happened to last set it for the steering rate, uh, the, the steering endpoints. And so you're going to want to adjust that AVC knob however you want that to be fit. If you want this to work as a dual rate knob only and turn AVC all the way off, that is in your manual. And it shows you exactly how to make it to where you just disable the uh, active vehicle control, period. All right, the final last thing that I am going to do before driving this truck is I'm looking over the whole vehicle. I'm looking over, do any of these rods have slack in them? Are any of these screws looking loose? I'm taking my handy dandy MIP drivers and I'm gonna actually sit here and I'm gonna hit most of these and I'm just gonna make sure that they all feel like they're tight. You will be surprised. It's not bad quality control. It's not something like that. It's the fact that there's people putting thousands of these together at a time. Maybe one screw gets missed. Maybe that's an important screw, right? So I'm going to go through all of this and I'm just going to look it over, right? It's not going to take very long. I'm just going to look it over uh, quickly and make sure that I don't see any of these rod ends being loose or anything like that. Um, since this vehicle does come with like adjustable turnbuckles that would set the camera back here, I'm gonna look, does it look like it's roughly the same width on either side? Overall, does it look like it's set up appropriately? Yes, I'm not seeing any issues, um, but I'm gonna hit these screws also just to make sure they're tight. Not monster tartening them, not over torquing them. These are screws in plastic. They don't need a lot of force, but I wanna make sure that they're not loose and so I don't have any issues on my first drive. So everybody, I really hope this was useful. Uh, if you are getting an Arma Vortex, this could also work for the Granite Typhon. It's all the same concept. Uh, just look your vehicles over first. It's not a big deal. It probably took me, I think literally this took me 15 minutes. And I know we're all excited. We get the vehicle out of the box. We're excited to try it. We're excited to just throw batteries in and go run it. But spend just a couple minutes. Maybe you'll find something that just isn't quite right and you can solve it before it becomes a bigger problem. 
So anyway, I hope this was really useful for you. If you're getting a Vortex or something like that, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear who else getting them. Come over here, check out some of our other videos. In the meantime, I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna start bashing this thing. I'm gonna give it a thorough test. So be on the lookout for those videos coming up very quickly. Thank you and goodbye.